So in this video, we will be learning about the Kosa Raju's algorithm. Now, what does this algorithm do? This algorithm helps you to find out all the strongly connected components in a directed graph. Now, what are strongly connected components? Strongly connected component is a component in which if you start from any node, you can reach every other node in that component. For an example, in this graph, in this graph, this is graph G1. In this graph, I can say this is a strongly connected component. Take any node in this component. Take one. You can reach every other node. One can reach to two. One can reach to three. Start from two. If you start from two, you can reach to three as well as one. Start from three. You can reach one. You can two. So in this component, you can see that every node is reachable to every other node. So this is a strongly connected component. Again, this 4 is a single node in a strongly connected component. Why 4 and 5 are not a single SCC? Because 4 can reach 5, but 5 cannot reach 4. That's why 4 is the single SCC. 5 is another single SCC. So these are the strongly connected components in this graph G1. Now the task will be to print all the nodes in a component on an in a in a SCC together like you have to print it like 1 2 3 this can be printed in any order it can be 3 2 1 2 1 3 that's your wish the second SCC is 4 while the third is 5 so for this graph we have three different SCC now if I ask you what are the SCC in this graph G2 now the answer to that will be one of them is this because you can again see every other node is reachable to every other node in this SCC. So I can say 1, 2, 3. And again, I can say this entire stuff is a strongly connected component. And if I write it, it will be 4, 5, 6. Again, order doesn't matter. Only the nodes present in the SCC should be together. So Kosaraju's algorithm helps us to club the nodes of a SCC together. Now let's understand what is the general intuition. Now if I try to do the DFS, what will happen is I will visit 1, I will visit 2, then I will visit 3, but then I will end up visiting 4 and 5. So if I do an DFS, I will end up visiting every nodes. Right. But if I do the DFS in a smarter way, what if I do the DFS of 5 at first? Then I will only visit 5 because there is nothing else to go. So I will only visit 5. Then what if I do the DFS only of 4? Then I will visit 4. I will not visit 5 because that's already visited. 4 cannot get back to any of the nodes. Now what if I do the DFS of 2? Then I will visit 2, 3, 1. So if I do the DFS in the reverse order, starting from 5, then 4, then 2, then I will be visiting this. For an example over here, if I had done the normal DFS, I'm talking about if I've done the normal DFS, I'd have done one, then I would have gone three, then I'd have gone two, then again the other one will be five, then four, then six, I would have ended up visiting everything. But what if I smartly do the DFS? Probably I started from six, for an example, I started from six. I start from six, I go to five, I definitely cannot go to three because the direction is on this side. Then I go to five, 4. So these are the things I, I can go if I start from 6. If I start from 6, I cannot go anything on this portion. After that, if I start from 3, I can go to 3. Then I can go to 2. Then I can go to 1. So there is an important observation that you can have. If I start from the back end, I can actually have DFS calls. Yes, I can actually have DFS calls. And this is the intuition on which the Kosa Raju's algorithm is developed. It tries to have a DFS right starting from the back edges, right starting from the back nodes, so that only those nodes in the SCC are visited. So in order to do that, Kosa Raju's algorithm has three steps which you need to follow and you'll be able to get all the SCC. So let's understand the three steps. So the first step of Kosa Raju's algorithm will be to sort all the nodes in order of finishing time. So that the intuition is still kept. So I'll sort all the nodes in order of the finishing time. 
So do you remember which of the algorithm does this? Now I have already taught in the previous videos an algorithm known as topological sort. And you know if you do the topological sort, the nodes that are visited at the last, it creates a topo sort in that way if you remember. So we are going to use a topological sort in order to get all the nodes. So do you know how to sort all the nodes in order of finishing time? Yes, you know that. If you stress your brain, in this course you have already learned about that algorithm. And that algorithm is nothing but topological sort. So if you apply a topological sort, all the nodes will be sorted in terms of finishing time. So let's do the topo sort. So what we do is, you know this, we will be taking a stack and we are going to call the DFS. So from where does the DFS start? The DFS call will start from 1. Then where will the DFS call go? The DFS call will go to its adjacent, starts from 1, goes to its adjacent that is 2, then goes to its adjacent that is 3. So it goes to its adjacent if you carefully observe. Now this is the moment you understand. The DFS of 3 has happened. So I can say the DFS of 3 is over and it doesn't have any adjacent nodes to go. So the DFS of 3 is over. So whenever it's over, you push it onto the stack. That is what we always do in the topological sort. Now the 2 still has a node 4 which is its adjacent. So you call the DFS for the node 4. Now the DFS 4 calls its adjacent that is the DFS of 5. Now does 5 have any adjacent node? No. So I can say the DFS call for 5 is also completed. So what you do is you simply take 5 and put it onto the stack. Now for 4, do you have any other adjacent nodes apart from 5? No. So the DFS call for 5 is also over. So you take it and put it into your stack. Now for 2, the DFS calls for 3 as well as 5 is over. So I can say that the DFS call for 2 is also over. So take it and put it into your stack. So I put it into my stack. Next, for 1, I have made sure that all the adjacent nodes are called because there are no further adjacent nodes. So the DFS of 1 is also over. So once topological sort is completed, you will have a stack which looks something like this. Now once you have done this, this is your step 1. The next step will be to transpose the graph. Yes, transpose the graph so that you don't end up going to the other part. You'll understand this. Transpose the graph is my next step. So whenever I transpose this graph, this graph will look something like this. You will have 1, 2, 3. So all the edges will get reversed, reversed, reversed. This will be reversed. 4 is here. This will be reversed. So all the edges gets reversed. Now, what is the advantage of doing this? Now, if you start a DFS from 1, you will go to 1, you will go to 3, you will go to 2, but it will not go to 4 and 5. That is the advantage of doing the transpose. Now, you will not be going anywhere apart from the SCC. So, you have done this. After this, do the DFS according to the finishing time. According to the finishing time is what we will be doing okay let's do the dfs according to the finish time now where is the finishing time stored on this stack so at first pick up this one okay and start the dfs from one so if you start the dfs from one at first you get one printed next one has an adjacent node three on this on this transpose graph it has an adjacent of three so mark it 3 has been marked. So print 3. Now 3 has an adjacent 2. So it goes on to DFS of 2. So I have made sure that it has go gone to the 2. So it is also marked as visited. So 2 will be printed. Now does 2 have any other adjacent node? No. That is the advantage of doing it transpose. You don't go back to 4. So I can definitely say 
one, three, two have been visited. So the DFS of two is completed. You go back. The DFS of three is completed. You go back. The DFS of one is completed. So you go back. So all of these guys have been printed, and this is nothing but your first SCC. Right after that, which is your next finishing time node two? Will you do a DFS call for two? No. Why? Because you can see two is already visited. So there will be no DFS call for two. Next is four. We take out four. Why? Because four is unvisited, and we call a DFS for four. Now, whenever we call a DFS for four, we print it. Now, four does it have adjacent node? Yes, two. But that's already visited. So there will be no further DFS calls for four because it has only one adjacent node two, which is visited. So four is also marked as visited. Perfect. Next, you have a five. So now you take out five. So you take out five. So when you take out five this time, market has visited. Does five have any other adjacent node? And it sees it doesn't have any adjacent node. So there will be no further DFS calls for five. Please make sure you print five. So there will be no further DFS calls for five. So I can definitely say that this five's DFS call is over, and this is marked as visited. So you can observe. Previously, had you started from four, you'd have gone to five. But now, since you have reversed the edges, four will have nowhere to go. Five will have nowhere to go. After this, you have three, but that is already visited. So I made sure that these three encircled nodes were taken up, and there was a DFS done. And when I did the DFS, I got the SCC. I got all the three SCCs, and I can print them separately. So the Kosa Raju's algorithm is very straightforward. You sort all the nodes in order of finishing time. That's nothing but topo sort, which takes a bigo of n complexity. After that, you transpose a graph, which is nothing but iterating on all the edges. So that's a bigo of n plus e. Right after that, you did a DFS according to the finish time on this transpose graph. So that's another bigo of n plus e. So if you add them up, I can definitely write it uh, near about b go of n plus e. That's the time complexity. What about the space complexity? Since you're converting a graph into a transpose graph, you'll definitely be requiring a n plus e in order to store the transpose graph. You'll also be requiring a b go of n in order to store the visited array that we require generally for the visited. Kind of a thing that we use in DFS, and we also will be requiring a stack in order to do the topological sort. So that will be the space complexity, and this is the time complexity for Kosa Raju's algorithm. Now it's time to understand the Java as well as C++ implementation of this algo. Job. So let's check out the Java code. Now, as you know that I always take a dummy, dummy graph. So I've taken a dummy graph, and I have a function which uh, prints the Kosa Raju's SCC, all the strongly connected components. So you know the step one is very simple. Uh, we have a stack and we call it DFS. We just basically have the topo sort implemented, right? So you can see in this DFS that is over here. I take the node and I take the stack, and right at the end I insert whatever node is there, because you know topo sort works in this way. Because whenever you leave out of there, you insert that node into your stack. So this is your step one. Step two was transpose the graph. So in order to transpose the graph, you need to create a transpose adjacency list. So you have done that. Right after that, this is what you do. Please make sure you remark the visit as uh, zero. Why? Because in this DFS call, the visited would have been marked as one. So please make sure you remark visited as one, and the transpose could be easily done with this. This is how you transpose. You change the directions. Basically, there was an edge between the node i and i t. So you did the other thing. You added i to i t now. Previously, there was an edge between i to i t. Now you reversed it, added i to i t. So you have reversed it, right? So transpose has been done over here. After that, you did a DFS according to finish time. So you iterate on the stack, get the topmost element on the stack, and if it says And if it is unvisited till now, you do a reverse DFS. Basically, you call the DFS. Now, whenever you call the DFS, it's a similar thing. Whenever the DFS goes, it prints 
the node and that will be a part of your SCC. Whenever you have done the DFS, all the nodes that are part of that strongly connected component will be printed. And then you can system.out.println will make sure for the next SCC you print a new line. So for every line, the SCC nodes are printed. So this is how the step one, the step two and step three has been written in the Java code. So this will be the Java code. So it's time to check out the C++ code. Now we know that this is how we usually take the directed graph input. We just have line number 29 where we say u will have v because there is an edge between u and v. It's not the undirected graph. So that's the directed graph input. Right after that at line number 32 is where I do the topo sort. That is the step one if you remember. We sort all the nodes according to their finishing time. So what I've done is I have made sure that all the nodes have been taken into the stack. Toposort has been implemented. Now, you know, in Toposort, whenever you come back from DFS, you insert the node into the stack. Simple. Step one is done over here, where we insert all the nodes in order of their finishing time into Toposort. Right after that, there is a transpose thing. Yes, right after that, there is something known as transpose. So if I write the transpose, I can carefully see that I have transposed it. It's very important you remark the visited as zero. Why? Because while doing this DFS, the visited was marked as one everywhere. So it's very important you mark it as zero because in future the step three will have a DFS call. So what I've done is I've done a transpose. So previously there was an edge from I to IT, from I to IT. Now there is an edge from IT to I, not from I. So this is how you do a transpose. You basically declare one more adjacency matrix and you do the transpose. Step two done, you have transposed the graph. Step three, go on the nodes according to their finishing time. Go on the nodes according to their finishing times. That is pop out of the stack. And if they're unvisited, call out the reverse DFS. That means call out the DFS, which works for the transpose graph. So I call out. And what I do is in this, I basically keep on printing these nodes. I keep on printing these nodes. So all the nodes that are part of your SCC gets printed. And after that, I print out a C out of handle so that all the nodes which are part of SCC gets printed on a line and then you print C out of handle so that the next line is printed every time. So this is how I print all the nodes that are part of SCC. So this is step one, step two, step three, as simple as that. So this will be it for the C++ code. I hope you have understood the entire explanation as well as the code just in case you did. Please, please, please make sure you like this video and if you are new to our channel, do, do consider subscribing our channel. With this, I will be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in the next video where I will be discussing some other concepts.